So, something a bit out of the norm on this video. A few videos ago, I did a video when I was repairing a Noco Boost charger. And somebody who was watching that video sent us an email saying, I noticed you had a, a case tractor. And he lives on the other side of the world. And he's got a problem with the dashboard on his tractor where one of the chips has apparently failed. And he was asking, would I be able to take my tractor dash apart read the chip and send them a copy of it to see if you can repair the dashboard in his so this is a case cx90 it's a 2001 model so let's get in we'll have a look at the dashboard see what comes out and then we'll get it on the blue mat and see if we can read this chip that he needs so this is the dashboard of the tractor it's got some lights at the top here and it's got a couple of digital displays well on his machine both of the displays are blank so it looks like it comes out with four screws around the outside here. So I think we'll start by taking those out. Right, I'll we'll just turn the ignition off. Now let's see if this just wants to come out now. So it looks like we've got a few plugs on the back here. So I'm not sure how those come out. Alright, I see now. There's a little clip you press in, and then these should just unplug, I think. Right, there's one out. Right, and there's the other one out. Right, so let's get this indoors on the blue mat and we'll take it apart. So, here's the dashboard out of the tractor there. I don't think you'd probably find too many farmers willing to take the dashboard out of the tractor and desolder chips and read them with EEPROM programmers or whatever, but we'll have a go. We'll try and help the guy out. So it looks like we've got about seven screws around the outside of the dashboard. So we'll remove those and see what's inside. So does the back come off or does the front come off? Well, I'm not too sure how this comes apart. Alright, yeah, I think I found out the problem. <coughs> it looks like this gasket here holds the front on. So it looks like there's a ribbon cable here, which I'm going to unplug. Right, so that's the front panel off. And I think I'll remove these four screws around this main LCD. Let's just hope we don't end up with two dead dashboards, eh? Right, so how is that attached? <coughs> well, it looks like that one's plugged in with the plug, so hopefully this one is. Right, so I guess that's the display board there, so we'll just put that to one side. And I think that's the IC down there. Let's just have a zoom in. So I think he needs us to read this EEPROM here. So looks like we might have to take the rest of this out. Looks like there's a couple of screws there, a couple of screws there. Then we'll see if we can get this whole panel out, which will give access to the back of the board, hopefully. zoom out a fraction and so that's the board liberated from its case oh and something's just fell out there 
Looking for a little bulb there. That's fell out of somewhere. I'm not sure where that fell out from. It looks like it could be the back of this clock. Yeah, because actually not. That's where it's fell out from. From there. It looks pretty much blown that one as well. Right. So it looks like it's the microchip EEPROM, which is a 93LC46B. So I'll get the solder and iron out. I don't want to put some low melt solder on this so it's easier to remove because we don't want to damage it. And it looks like that's it there. So let's get the solder and iron out. Right, so I'm going to put some flux on this chip first and then we'll put some low melt solder on. Right, let's see if I can just pull it out the other side now. Right, there we go. Right, so one chip removed. Right, I'll clean those holes up first and then we'll clean the chip up. Clean that up with a bit of IPA. And we'll just see what the other side of the board looks like. Yeah, the other side looks fine. Right, let's clean this chip up now then. Just going to use a bit braid with some flux on it. Yeah, maybe a little bit more on that side. Right, so let's get this into the programmer now. And hopefully we should be able to read it and get the data off that he requires. Right, so I've got my laptop set up and this is the programmer that Alex kindly sent us over. It's an XG ECU T48. So what we'll do, we'll pop the IC in, just in the ZIF socket here. And that's the way the IC goes, there's a little orientation label thing here. I'll just clamp that in, that was a bit uh, severe. There we go. Right, now we'll go over to the laptop screen. And the first thing we need to do is select which IC it is. I've already typed it in in the search bar here and selected microchip. And that's it there, the 93LC46B. And I've had a look at the data sheet and it's 16 bits. So we'll go right there. So we'll hit select. And then it should just be a matter of reading it. So if we hit read, read success. Right, so that's the data which it contains there, and there's not a lot in it. It's mainly blank. Right, so we'll save that. And then we'll email that off to him. And the next thing we need to do now is replace this chip back into the dashboard and check that the tractor still works. Right, let's get this chip back in then. Let's give that a tiny bit of a clean up. Right, now just to reassemble it. So we've got this little ribbon cable just to go in. Which you probably won't be able to see there, but that's that plugged in. I'm just gonna give the give the LCD just a quick wipe there because it's got some dirt on it. Right, 
So it's just a beam like I've put these screws back in now and then we're done. Right, let's go refit this in the tractor and see if it works. Right, so back in the tractor. Let's just plug these two plugs back in. There's one. And there's the other. Right, let's see if this still works then. Yes. Right. So that seems all good. Let's just start it up, see if the rev counter works. Yeah, the uh, warning light there is just because the hand brakes on. Right. Excellent. So my dashboard still works, so I'm pleased about that. Right, we'll uh, wait to hear back from Alex now then and see how he gets on. So I emailed the file off to Alex and I got a reply back to say that he hopefully would be to get rid by the end of the week. So I thought, oh, well, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But then I shortly received another email uh, not long after that saying we were keen to see if it worked. So I pushed another job aside and we tested it out and we have a winner the cluster is now operational and he sent us some pictures through so the first one here is when they removed the EEPROM from their old dash and programmed it then fitted it and then when he powered it up the tractor dashboard had the same hours on as my tractor because that must be stored in the EEPROM so then he used another tool I think it was a tool online or something that he said he used and he managed to reprogram the hours to the correct hours that the tractor should have there so you can see there it's uh, 4124 which is the correct hours it should have so that got me thinking I thought well let's have a look at this EEPROM the bytes in this EEPROM see if we can figure out what the different bytes and things do in there so Alex kindly sent me through a copy of the service manual for the tractor and this part of the manual here tells you how to program different things in the the display through the menus on the front of it I mean how to set the clock and that stuff which I actually didn't know how to do I didn't actually get a manual with the tractor when we got it so it tells you how to program the clock and things and how to set it for miles per hour or kilometers per hour and I've got thinking that all of this stuff must be set in the EEPROM. Things like the tyre radius, which it uses for calculating the speed. And other things like that. And it's got all these values here, these constants. So that's the value that you actually program into the panel and it stores it in the EEPROM. Things like the service interval whether it's 250 hours or 300 hours and it tells you the recommended value there so that my track is a CX so that would be 250 would be the service interval hours so I thought well I wonder if we can find those values in the EEPROM so I started having a look so the 250 service hours interval I thought well let's have a look in the EEPROM see if there's anything that's got a value of 250 and if we just look here in the EEPROM at address 4, we've got a value of FA. So if we get the calculator up and put it in hex mode and type in FA and then hit decimal, it's a value of 250. So that must be the hours interval counter. So on this page of the manual, there's something here called an axle ratio constant. And it's different for different models of tractors. So here it says CX series and it says 408. So let's see in the dump if we have anything that's 408. So if I type in on the calculator 408 and we can see that's 198 in hex. And if we look here we've got 01. 
Now this is in reverse byte order because it's a 16-bit value and we're viewing it as 8-bit data here. So 0198 is actually these two bytes here. So that'll be the axial constant. And we can go through this uh, dump and we can find out we can probably find out most of the things. Now Alex did send me a copy of his dump which was different to my dump because it had the hours changed. So I thought we'd have a look to see how the hours were calculated. If we have a look at this comparison that I've got up on the screen here, you can see the difference in the bytes that have changed here. And there's three bytes that have changed between my tractor, which has got the 6,000 and so hours, and the value that he's put in his tractor, which is 4,000 and odd. So I thought, let's see if we can figure out how this hour value is actually calculated. So I spent a bit of time looking at it and I've came up with this here. So if we have a look at the data in the dump on my tractor here, we've got these four bytes here, which is 6C, C6, E7, EB. And what the tractor seems to do internally is add this value to those bytes which is C6666666 for some reason. So what we need to do, we need to swap these two bytes around. So 6C, C6 becomes C6, 6C. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? And the E7EB becomes EBE7. We then subtract these from each other. So C6, the C minus the C is zero. Six minus six is zero. 6 minus 6, 0. C minus 6 from it is 6. E take away 6 is 8. B take away 6 is 5. E take away 6 is 8. And 7 take away 6 is 1. So the result is 0, 0, 0, 6, 8, 5, 8, 1. Or... 6,858 hours and 0.1 So if we look at the dump that Alex sent and we do the same sort of calculations So we'll swap the bytes around C take away C is 0 6 take away 6 is 0 6 take away 6 is 0 A take away 6 is 4 7 take away 6 is 1 8 take away 6 is 2 A take away 6 is 4 and 6 take away 6 is 0 which gives the result there and if we want to go the other way let's suppose you know you wanted to reprogram your dash to say I don't know uh, 1120 hours for instance we would just put the bytes in like that we'd add the magic value to it instead of subtracting it so 0 plus C6 is C6 0 1 plus 66 is 67 the 12 plus the 66 is 78 and 0 plus 66 is 66 we need to then swap those bytes around so the C6 67 becomes 67 C6 and the 78 66 becomes 6678 so we program those values into the EEPROMIT address 20 and we'd have 1,120 hours. Now, we can confirm this as well because I did find a site online that lets you upload a dump from one of these EEPROMs. They do charge you to alter it, but it'll actually display what hours that dump has. So if we go to the site here, if I can just find it. And here we go, it's called Car Prog Online. And I'll just browse to the file. And this is the one that I've altered now. And we'll just hit Analyze. It should come up with the 1120 hours, like I told it to. Right then, so we've managed to fix a tractor on the other side of the world. So, yeah, I'm pleased about that. Right, I think we'll wrap up here then, so... If you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. 
And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.